Welcome back guys. This is Jason, KM4ACK. Today we're going to take a look at the lithium iron phosphate batteries versus the SLAs and show you how this $100 battery is actually cheaper than the $20 battery. Stick around and we'll get right to it. Hey guys, before we get started, I got to give a shout out to these guys. They're my latest patrons over on Patreon. If you'd like to support the channel, I'll leave a link to Patreon down in the description below. So I received an email recently asking me uh, if weight really wasn't uh, a factor. In other words, it didn't matter how much something weighed. Why would you spend the money, the extra money for lithium iron phosphate battery technology? So I wanted to take a few minutes and go through that because the lithium iron phosphate batteries actually wind up being cheaper in the long run. So let's take a look at this. Now this is just a screenshot. And guys, I'm not affiliated with any of these websites. I just pulled some uh, for reference. I do use the Dakota lithium battery and I will say that I have been very pleased with it. But what you're looking at here is a 10 amp hour battery that cost a hundred bucks. So, and that's before shipping and whatnot, but we're not gonna worry about that today. So here's what appears to be an equivalent SLA battery, uh, 10 and a half amp hours for only 20 bucks. But here's the catch to that. An SLA battery, you'll actually only get about half of its rated amps out of it. So that 10 and a half amp hour uh, rating, you're actually going to see about five amp hours out of it. So because of this, we're gonna have to buy two of these to get the same capacity out of these that we would get out of the lithium iron phosphate battery. So when we start looking at that cost, what you see here is that $20 battery now becomes a $40 battery. Now, it still looks like it's a better deal than buying the lithium iron phosphate at first glance. But let's discuss this a little bit further because the difference comes in the charge cycles. So if we look at the charge cycles of the batteries, the SLA batteries, now it kind of depends on which website you're looking at. Some of them will rate them as low as 250. Others will say they're good for 500 uh, charge-discharge cycles. So I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt and say that we get 500 cycles out of the SLA batteries. The lithium iron phosphate batteries, though, are rated at 2,000 charge cycles. So I'll get four times the number of charge cycles out of the lithium iron batteries than I'll get out of the SLA batteries. So when you start uh, looking at that again, it becomes different in the numbers. If I buy that set of two batteries four times, now I've got a total investment of $158 instead of the $99 cost factor of the lithium iron phosphate the first time. So looking at that, it, it's actually cheaper. Uh, to, to go ahead and make that upfront investment. There's also some other benefits to going ahead and purchasing the lithium iron phosphate batteries. First is the weight of the batteries. If you buy two of the SLA batteries, you're coming in at a total of 14 pounds of weight. Uh, and I'm just taking that right from the website. Maybe a little hard for you guys to see. But right down here, it shows you that each of those weighs just over 7 pounds. So that's 14 pounds of battery. Now, I know the guy in the email wasn't really concerned about weight, uh, but I just want to kind of address this as an additional benefit of the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Uh, so that's 14 pounds. This one comes in just under 3 pounds. I believe it's actually like 2 pounds 14 ounces uh, or, or something roughly. I just rounded it up to three pounds. Now, the next thing I wanna look at is uh, the discharge curve of these batteries. And guys, pardon my, uh, pardon my drawing here. 
I am uh, not an artist by any stretch of the imagination. But this is a rough representation of the discharge curve of a sealed lead acid battery. They start out, uh, you know, somewhere 12 and a half, 13 volts, and then it's just a steady decline all the way down to complete discharge. Notice right around 50%, we're down below 11 volts. Basically, we've got a dead battery. Uh, most radios will start complaining. Some will actually shut off when the voltage gets too low. So that's about all you're going to get out of the seal lead acid. And that's why we have to buy two of them to get the same amp hour rating that we can get out of the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Now let's take a look at the discharge curve on the lithium iron phosphate. You'll notice it is flat across the top and it will remain flat to somewhere around 80 or 90 percent and then it is a cliff dive. It drops its voltage very quickly but it does stay up there around 13 volts through the vast majority of its life. Now it will drop some. Uh, it's not perfectly flat. Uh, again, my uh, artist skills are lacking here. But it is, uh, you know, it does remain relatively high until around the 80 to 90 percent volt when it starts dropping off. So the radios like that higher voltage over the, uh, over the life of the battery or the, the life of the discharge of the battery. So there's yet another uh, advantage for the lithium iron phosphate batteries. All right, guys, well, this one was a little shorter than normal, but I just wanted to kind of address this, uh, why you might want to make that investment up front. I know it's a little bit more uh, cash outlay in the beginning, but over time, you actually come out cheaper buying the lithium iron phosphate batteries. Like I said, I don't have any affiliation uh, with any of these companies, although if anybody knows anybody at Dakota, I'd love for them to be a sponsor on the channel. All right, guys, we will see you on the next video. Until then, 7-3.